Hello and welcome to Talking Wrestling with Pond Water Dave. And unlike that theme song, I am not AI, I am live. My name is Justin <laughs> Davis. And as always, I'm joined by the First Lady Darren Anderson Fan Club, Miss Amy Vaughn, and Mr. Pond Water Dave Miller. Dave, who do we have with us here this week? Oh, we are really excited about our guest this week. Our guest tonight is uh, is, is a TikTok sensation with over 1.8 million followers. You've seen him on CBS as the great uh, the greatest at home videos. You've seen him um, on WWE's The Bump. You've uh, most recently seen him on the um, NBC's Hot Wheel Challenge, where he actually where he won the NBC's Hot Wheel Challenge. He is the commissioner of BIW Wrestling. And my friend, welcome to the show, Mr. Nick Harrison. How you doing, Professor? Hey, Dave. So good to meet you, man. I'm so good to see you, I should say. Hey, everybody. Justin, good to meet you. Amy, great to see you again. And uh, I, see you. So I am so pumped to be on the show, man. I'm excited. We're excited to have you here. Uh, we just got that open. And Justin and Amy got to see it for the first time. I've been just <laughs> busting at the same to show it to them all afternoon. I I'm love it. JD Hoop, JD Hoops, incredible. There's nothing he can't do. Oh, that's sweet. It's it, it looked great, man. I was jealous. You know, I got a wrestling podcast, and we don't have nothing like that. That's that's <laughs> pretty dang dope. I like that. Shout out to JD Hoop. I need to talk to you. Like that was good. Thank you. Well, Professor, let's start with this. Um, let's start it. Um, let's start out with finding out. Um. Since, I, since you're the BIW commissioner, tell us about how you made your journey into pro wrestling. Uh, well, I've been a wrestling fan ever since I was a I was in diapers. You know, anytime I go on the podcast or go on anything, they ask me about my wrestling fandom. I tell them ever since I was a little kid watching NWA, uh, watching guys like Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, the Four Horsemen, Magnum TA, Wildfire, Tommy Rich, the Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express. You know, just the, the list, uh, call-offs, it's just the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And uh, I've just been a fan ever since. And, you know, I always wanted to work in professional wrestling. And I met our buddy Josh Newell uh, through working with a sports radio station in North Louisiana. And he was getting started with BIW. And he was like, you know, I need my, my heel manager. I need my guy. So he knew that I was a huge fan. So there was a show that we did. Uh, one of the first show, the very first show that BIW ever did all those years ago where I was a plant where they were going to have a wrestler come by and I was going to draw Jack with him. He's going to push me through like three or four rows of chairs. Oh. So uh, that's how everything started. It's so funny because I, that happened. I go back to the bathroom. And there's a little kid uh, in there. He's like, you see, that's what ha that's why you don't mess with the wrestlers. So. <laughs> It's like, uh, uh, thanks, kid. I appreciate it. I, I remember that for next time. So, who shoved you? Uh, it was uh, Andy Dalton shoved me. Uh. Dalton shoved me. That's my boy. Shout out to Andrew, man. He's great. I was talking to him another day. Uh, so he pushed me, and then we went back and forth for the next couple of shows and didn't put a hand on me. And then they decided to make me a special guest, guest referee for a match between him and JT Lamada. And that's where I turned heel. Uh, crotch Lamada uh, in the middle of the match to help Andy get the win. And then my career began as a heel manager for years in BIW. Then BIW took some time off, came back. When they came back, uh, I was in my life a changed man. So Josh was like, we want to kind of switch things up and have you turn face and be our commissioner. I said, that's, okay, that's great. Let's do that. And so for the past decade, I've been the commissioner of Bayou Independent Wrestler Wrestling, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it, every bump, every bruise, every push, every shove, every wrestler telling me that I'm ugly and that I have no business being there and then suspending and fining and all these things. It's just it's just a joy. And now I, I get to get – I forgot to bring my clipboard in so I can give you your performance review during the uh, – during the podcast because we, we need to talk about your job day because um there 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 are constituents that are upset about the job that you've been doing by you independent wrestling so we're we're gonna have to discuss that tonight during the show yeah, yeah i got i got booed the other night in my own hometown and I, i'm all in my feels about it <laughs> <laughs> i sent you the picture earlier of uh one of our people uh one of our guys a rooster sent me a picture of you in like shades as if you're blind 
holding up the BIW Deep South Heritage Championship. And uh, it's, you know, you know, you, 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 we, we're going to have to talk. Well, he said that Brewster said he didn't make that. He said it was, he just, it was sent to him and he thought it was funny. Oh, he sent it to me. I know who, I don't know who made it, but he sent it to me. So I know that we, we're going to have to talk. Talk about right. it. There's somebody out there who believes that you're not doing the job you're supposed to be doing, then I'm going to need to look over the job that you're doing and say, okay, what what can we do to improve, Dave? What can he, we needs, do to he always needs an extra person looking over him telling him what he's doing wrong. You know, nobody's well, saying that. No, no, see that we don't want to use the word wrong. We don't use the W word. This, that's bad. That's bad. We're not saying that you're doing anything wrong. wrong. What can we do to improve? I, what can we do to honestly, back? I'm a firm believer that referees' decisions are final. <laughs> now, and remember, during that after that match with Rob Love, I said that I said I, I stand behind my referees. The referee's decision is final, and I believe well, that. In my However, defense, you were you were over there with the crowd that kept pointing. You saw me check him. He did. I could not find a chain on him, and the only time I saw a chain. You know, be careful. It was on Chase Stevens. That See, that's why I that's why I stood behind you because even though they were yelling and pointing, it was kids. Of course, you know kids. Kids say the darndest things. That's yeah, that, that was a great show. Kids pointing, he's got a chain. He's got a chain. I was like, hey, he's checking him. The referee is checking him the whole time. And you were, you were checking him. And then it ends up in Chase Stevens' tights. And mm. then he had to restart the match, and then Rob. Gets the quick dupe with the little action, the leverage on the rope. And uh, I gave him the what for for that. And I kicked him out of the building. We did what we needed to do. But, you know, still, there have been instances that have been pointed out where you missed a couple of things at matches or, you know, maybe you got knocked out. We saw it in the open where yeah. people are punching you and throwing you around <laughs> and you're getting slammed in the turnbuckles and stuff. So maybe hey, it's, you know, it's the Wild West and BIW. Mm. Nick, have you seen have you seen that gif or that uh, meme of that guy security guy checking people out in front of the stadium and just going like this in front of them and they walk by? That's that's the type of rub down Dave was giving this guy. It looks like I mean, check. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the greatest pat down. No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> it's more of a more of a type of situation. <laughs> so it's you know it's but I don't again. I stand behind our referees. I stand behind their decisions. Uh, he is our senior referee. He is a man, but he's not a man above reproach. Oh, he's definitely senior. senior. Well, well, going. He forward, is that. He is that. Forward, I I I him in the locker room. He's definitely senior. I will, see yeah, him. I'm an elderly. He's an elderly. He's an elderly. <laughs> he <is> an elderly. <laughs> Ronnie Millsap could have found that chain. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, if there was a stranger in the house, Dave would not have found it. No, oh, oh man. Sure. At all, but, I, but, I, but I played, but I, I give you my pledge that I will do better. I, I know, I, I you better, you better do better. We're, we'll again, we'll be discussing this throughout the show, Dave. Just, yes, be, just be ready, okay? As your commissioner, I, I have to call you on the carpet for some things. It's okay, so you know, and you were commissioner when I when I when I joined up at BIW, and it's been 10 years, I'm, yeah, I'm in my 10th year of BIW, and uh, I can't imagine you as a hill ref. I mean, it's a hill, uh, a hill, it's a hill at all. Well, I tell you this, there was a time and it was a lot of fun. If you go back and watch some of those old BIW shows and, uh, see, you know, me outside the ring and be cutting promos, it was, here's the thing. Anybody who's like an actor will tell you, no, I will not do that. Ginger. Not at all. You know, <laughs> never, no, never, no, never, never leave, never leave them alone. Uh, uh, you know, anybody will tell you, any actor will tell you they enjoy playing the villain more than they enjoy playing the hero because playing the villain is fun. Playing uh, the bad guy is a lot of fun. You get to say certain things that you don't get to say when you play the good guy. So being a heel manager was one of my favorite things that I've ever done in my life, even in or out of wrestling. Because it gave me the freedom to do, uh, say some things and do some things that I would never say, uh, as who uh, as who I am, you know, who I normally am. So you know, getting to say somebody's fat or tell them to put the nachos down or tell them to stop shopping <laughs> off or, uh, go 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 back to kissing your cousin and leave us alone, you know that that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't, you know, you can't imagine me. I, I understand you can't imagine me saying those things, but there was a time 
where I did. And I had just the best fun because we, the whole plan was, and this is before Jer Chris Jericho had it in uh, AEW, was to start a faction called the Inner Circle. Mm -hmm. And the Inner Circle was myself, uh, Andy Dalton, Joey Spector, uh, Andy, uh, Sean Cordova, and at one point, JT Lamont as well. Uh, were all a part of the faction, and it was just like smaller guys who were constantly winning. And they, I think that that faction had the best win loss percentage in the history of BIW for any faction that includes Southern Royalty because they, they just couldn't get, be beat. And that's what made people hate them so much because they looked like guys that you could just see on the street beat up, but they wouldn't lose, they just didn't lose, and it drove people crazy. We constantly got lunged at by fans back when we were still in the uh, Boys and Girls Club over in West Monroe. I don't know if you were around during those times, Dave, yeah. but that was, yeah, over in Balkanville and West Monroe over the Boys and Girls Club, they would try to lunge at dudes. Like, we almost had a fight with somebody once, uh, me trying to lead Dalton to the ring, and this guy was about to grab him, and you already know if that had happened, the whole locker room would have come out there and gave him the wolf for so it's like... That's the kind of stuff that ended up happening. But you know that if that's what's happening and that's, you're doing that, then you're doing a good job. Like oh, yeah. You got the people in the, in, the, in the seats hot and ready to just jump on you, then you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And yeah. we did. When, when they're completely bought in and, and, and foaming at the mouth, uh, there's nothing better than that. Nothing I, too, when I, when I was a Hill manager, I was a Hill manager for about nine months and – is best nine months of my wrestling career. Dude, it's it's I fun, it. right? It's fun. It's fun. It's one of the most fun things you're going to do in the professional wrestling is be a heel, right? Be a heel manager, a heel wrestler, heel commentator. It's just, it's a lot of fun because you get to say things that you wouldn't normally say, do things you wouldn't normally do, and you get to explore that side of you. And it's just a lot of fun to be a part of. So it's, I, I love it. I love every minute of it. I will say the one time I got to be a hill manager, I thoroughly enjoyed it at Top Guy Tussle. So that was fun. That was the only time I got to be a heel. She's well, a natural heel, Nick. I wouldn't I wouldn't guess that. She's so sweet. Yeah. Just right. I've met oh, Nick. He's seen me. So you can't spill lies about me because we've we've talked. Mm -hmm. uh, we've discussed. We've you know okay. We've talked about wrestling and things. I love it. <laughs> Double A and my love of double A. My head is blocking it, but I got the old uh, NWA television title back here. I see. Right. I got uh, which I which is probably my most prized possession as far as wrestling belts is concerned. My my collection is nowhere near days, of course. Mm. But the legendary Pondwater Day is wrestling belt collection. But that one is one that I'm very proud of. I know it's the black belt, the black strap, and not the red strap. But I am a huge fan of it because of, you know, the significance and all the people who have held it and what it meant. You know, my favorite television champion of all time was Tully Blanchard. I love Arn, but Tully was my favorite TV champ. You know, all I do in life is get dressed quick. Like it's mm -hmm. that's, you know, it's stuff like that that really reeled me in. And that's why I loved being a heel manager when I was because it parking it got me i was able to pull from all of that i would always wear suits and i was always you know telling people don't touch me and, and <laughs> this costs more than your house like these, these, <laughs> shoes, these shoes cost more than that car you got out there in the parking lot with all the rust over it and the hubcap falling off and it's overheating right now you need to go catch it before it catch on fire so don't you touch me don't you touch my shoes or i'm a suit so it's like <laughs> It's a lot of fun. It's just great time. It is awesome. Uh, you also uh, so let's talk about how let's talk about how social media has blown up for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I I looked up, I looked up on TikTok one day and noticed like you were your and your content is fabulous. It's entertaining. Anybody, I can't imagine any, especially anybody that's here tonight that hadn't seen it, but. How long were you doing it before you got noticed by a wrestler that you were doing their entrance? Uh, or who was the well, first wrestler that noticed? Let me see. Uh, that's God, that was so long ago. 
that I started doing the uh, like I started doing the entrances not too long after I started. And just, just to go back, I've been doing social media for years, uh, just playing around on it, having fun. And then the pandemic came up and I jumped on TikTok and that's when stuff really started to explode and blow up. And then I started getting into the wrestling stuff and I started doing the entrances and people started to take notice. Then I started posting them on uh, at Twitter at the time, now X. And that's when people really started to uh, take shape and take notice. Um, trying to think. Who might have been the first one to say something? I can't. I honestly can't remember. It's been a lot, and there's been like the ones that are the most memorable. I'll do that because I can't think of who the first one. The most memorable ones were Dave Batista, which was just amazing because somebody. It wasn't even my post. Somebody reposted my video. And he was like, "Man, I love this guy." So that mm-hmm. was. Really Cool. Uh, doing the uh, the Shawn Michaels, the original Shawn Michaels entrance that I did uh, got a million views in two days. It was the most viral a wrestling entrance that I've done has ever gone, and that and it's blowing up again on Instagram. I reposted it on Instagram a couple weeks ago, and it's blowing up all over. Again. It's about yeah, a million or so views now. Um, but I did a. Did it again, but I did the uh, was it, it wasn't 10, but one of the rest of I think it might have been 12, WrestleMania 12, where he came down on the zip line. Yep, and he commented on that one. He's like, You did that better than I did, so that was cool. Uh, Seth Rollins was a big one for me because that's when he had first started doing the whole oh. And he retweeted it and said, you know, here's a guy who's embracing the vision. And so that was, was really cool. And uh, AEW, when they did a side-by-side of me and Adam Cole and posted it to their Instagram and it absolutely took flight and just blew up, that was really cool for me too. So those are some that kind of stick out in my head as some of the just really – like, and, of course, most – wrestlers that I do impressions of will respond. Like Wardlow responded. Uh, gosh, there's a bunch of dudes in AEW that have like messaged me privately or dudes who are indie guys who have messaged me privately to talk about how they liked it. Riddle uh, retweeted the one that I did and really enjoyed it. And, you know, of course, the companies themselves, WWE, we know they've continuously retweeted and Shared the stuff and AW and Impact and that kind of thing. So it that's to me that's the coolest part is not just you know the one the big ones that have uh, responded, but the majority of them you know will respond and say something or comment and say something really cool. And some of them have become pretty cool. Uh, have become we've become cool off screen and all outside of wrestling. You know we message each other or, on a, on a regular basis and talk about albums that we like and music and we get together and have dinner and that kind of thing. So it just, it's really cool when you get the chance to kind of break bread with these guys and just hang out and they really enjoy it. Oh, Matt Hardy and MVP too are two more that were really big for me. Cause I loved Matt Hardy's the, it was the V one entrance, which is my, the one that had the Matt facts on the side. Yes. That one was one I'm very proud of because I actually put Matt facts on the side of my video. It's like Matt likes orange juice in the <laughs> and that you know, that kind of crazy stuff, but it was it, it just just stuff like that getting noticed by the rest of themselves, getting noticed by their family members. I remember Dewey Foley retweeted something, Mick saw it, and then he retweeted it too, and then started following me. Like stuff like that is just it's really cool. And uh, so those are some of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. But there's been a lot, and I'm just very thankful and proud. Uh, that they uh, appreciate it and they like it because that's what it's for is to pay tribute to the wrestlers that kind of shaped my fandom and where it is now. Yeah, and then WWE took notice of it and and asked you to come on the bump. Yeah, that was uh, <clears throat> that was pretty crazy. So that was uh, spawned off of a video that I did in my classroom of an impression of the Undertaker. Uh, like if the under if the Undertaker taught a class, 
So my kids <laughs> came up with the idea for this video. They were like, you know, you can come into the classroom like the Undertaker while we're sitting here. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And when somebody volunteered to like turn the lights on and off while I was coming into the classroom and the lights were all, they turned the lights off. Then I walked in front of the podium and then I raised my arms up and they turned the lights back on and the music was playing in the background. And uh, WWE saw it, uh, took notice, commented on the video <clears throat> and then sent me a DM. They were like, hey, we really enjoy what you do. We like yourself. We'd like for you to come on the bump. Now, my immediate reaction was to, and I'm, th- I'm being completely transparent here, uh, walk out of my classroom for a few minutes and kind of cry for a little bit and kind of sob. Because as a wrestling fan, as someone who loves the business and loves professional wrestling the way that I do, for WWE to take notice and say, we like what you're doing, we'd like for, to you come, for you to come on our programming was huge for me. Because that was never what it was meant for. It was never a thing where I was trying. You know, there are people who get on the internet, get on TikTok for cloud, for fame. They want to be TikTok famous and all that stuff. I was a bored teacher stuck in my house during a pandemic and decided to start impersonating wrestlers. And it turned into a thing I never thought it would become. So them reaching out and saying they wanted me to be on their programming just meant the world to me. So we had to work out schedules because it was during testing. And anybody who has children knows that testing during uh, school time is very crazy at the end of the year. Uh, but I ha- was just so happened going to be at a conference in New Orleans uh, towards the end of the school year. And I would have been able to uh, do it from my hotel room, which is why when I was doing the show, you know, I was in a hotel room. Uh, so that was just big and huge and we scheduled it out and got it together and then i went and did it uh while i was in new orleans and there you have it now it's on the internet for everybody to see whenever they want to go and check out youtube and there's the bump we have professor nick harrison we have rj city we have dominic and ray mysterio on the show today you guys check it out so it was just it was just really cool pretty pretty star-studded episode there yeah, that was during the time where RJ was doing regular segments with the bump. And uh Ray and Dominic had just won the SmackDown, the, I think the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. So they were coming on. This is when Dominic wasn't an, an absolute jerk. Uh and they were, you know, they were on the show together talking about becoming the you know first father-son tag team champions in WWE history. So that was just a very important episode to me. Yeet. There's the champ. What up, buddy? I love that guy. I really oh, do. He's, he's the best. We just I just shared a picture of him with the, with our with our group chat. Um, because when we talked about his predator gear, and I just happened to stumble across his predator gear and shared and shared it with him. Um uh, RJ City's a Spider Man gear on this past weekend, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was he's just got the best gear. He's a really great guy. One a legit one of my favorites. He's putting on he puts in the work. He deserves every good thing that's coming his way. Yeah, like he's great in ring. He's very smooth. Dude looks like a million dollars. Uh just I I I, I dig it. Florida man, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, it takes a lot of cultivating to get this where it is. And soon you'll be able to buy the same products that I use in order to keep yours the way that you need to keep it. So look out on my social for that. I'm going to do a photo shoot tomorrow to, so I can be pretty on the website. <laughs> you mentioned uh you mentioned RJ City being on the bump and doing all that. That's a that's a good pickup for AEW. That guy's that guy's got a lot of talent. Let me I I'll tell you this. Uh, I've never met RJ in person. Never met RJ in person, but I can tell you that I am enthralled regularly by his talent by his comic timing by what he's able to do uh on camera with these uh talents from aew my favorite i watch uh hey ew on a regular basis and my favorite episode has to be the episode that he did with the referees so that will be one that you would want to watch if you haven't seen it yet because he interviewed all the aew referees and it was absolutely hilarious so fun 
Uh, he's just he he really knows how to he he he's a fa- of course he's a part of the business been part of the business for years so he knows it in and out. But outside of that, he's just he's funny. He's he's legitimately funny, and a lot of times in wrestling, you need people who are just really good with comic timing and legitimately funny and he's he's very talented and very funny so i think AEW has done a great thing by doing what they're doing with him with hey ew and it you know it works it really works and it gets to show a lighter side of the talent that AEW has and i you know i'm all for it so shout out to rj city well Justin, Amy, I want to jump in here because I'm. Are y'all? I'm just. I, go ahead, Amy. Okay. Well, I saw when he was talking about that, that he was a teacher and testing that you. Oh yeah, I did want to ask you about that. Justin's a teacher. Yeah, we're getting ready to do that actually. Uh, oh, here God bless you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God. No, no, God. What What was it that you taught? I taught ELA. Uh, well, first I taught speech because I taught at uh, Grambling State University for seven years left that to go back to school to get my degree in education and got it uh, a, a double degree in uh, elementary education, first through fifth, and uh, a mild to moderate di- disability and got hired at the school in Monroe, Louisiana and taught uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade over the span of seven years uh, and then decided to go to uh, go, go into administration. And I was a dean of students for one year, one. Uh, then I met my lovely wife and decided to move. So there you go. Well, we had already known each other, but we decided I we fell in love, and I decided to be here instead of there. And part of that was giving up my job, which at the time was a, was way easier than I thought it was going to be because of things that were going on in the school district. And you know how that goes, Justin. So yeah, it's. <clears throat> it, it was a great time in my life. I really enjoyed being a teacher. I'm always going to be a teacher at heart. I still teach my six year old son. He's a uh, homeschooled and our, you know, so it's, it's very, very important to me education. So I'm yeah. very thankful for that. I am K through 12 mild moderate <laughs> as well. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think, I'm, I think I'm in year 15. <laughs> so I've got a long way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I retired at 15 years because yeah. uh everything that was going on outside of it. I know, I know it's like there are a lot of people. How do you retire at 15 years? Like that's you can do early retirement at 15 years and just you know figure out what it is you want to do uh from there. Uh if you choose to, if mm-hmm. there's something else going on in your life that you want to do. And I did, you know, so I wanted to do the social media thing full time and just take a go at it because I already I always had the degree and the certification in my back pocket if I needed it right. to go back yeah. to. But I haven't. So thank God for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it takes a lot of balls to uh, to walk away from from that and, you know, bet on yourself. It has been very, it was very difficult. I struggled for a while. Because it wasn't just because of the security and the benefits and the the steady paycheck, which that was a part of it, but the a lot of it was just you know fear of failure, you know, not yeah. willing, to, you know, scared to bet on myself because I'm just like that stability, that's something that's never going to go away. There's always going to be a need for teachers, uh, no matter how much the world is getting automated, you will still need human teachers in the classroom. What? So what, you know, I'm giving that up to go into a very volatile market where I don't know if I'm going to succeed. But thankfully, uh, I've had great support from my wife, my family, my friends who have been willing to help me through every step of the way uh, to help make this dream a reality. And now it is thriving it is burgeoning. And I have God to thank. I'm just very I'm very blessed and very thankful. I wanted to (laughs) I wanted to ask you, Professor, there is a Matt Blackstock in our chat and he says he hopes to see you in Vegas next week for the Cheer Choice Awards. What is what's the Cheer Choice Awards? Uh, So the Cheer Choice Awards. Oh, boy. 
Let me put that down. The Cheer Choice Awards is a uh, is an award show for content creators. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, there's Matt. I, I recognize Matt. The Cheer Choice Awards is an award show for content creators who, you know, have a positive effect on the world around them and the people around them and uh, people who put positivity into the atmosphere through social media. And I was nominated for an award called the Media Master Award. And the top five uh, get to go to Las Vegas for the award show and be recognized uh, because they have a possibility of winning. And I was in the top five in my category. So I am uh, up for the award. I do not know if I've won it as of yet. We will not find out until they call the names out on the screen, but it will be streaming live. So people will have an opportunity to watch it through the website uh, and be looking out at my socials over the next couple of weeks. Uh, for those announcements and how you can watch the Cheer Choice Awards. But yeah, I'm very excited to head out to Vegas and meet some of these big name content creators and uh, kind of rub elbows with them, the 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 content creating elite, and uh, possibly get my name called for an award. How exciting! Congratulations yeah. to you. Yeah, we're pulling for you, and you deserve it. I mean, your con- your 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 content is so positive. I can't remember a time I ever watched your content and I didn't leave. And, and, and go away from it not feeling good yeah because there's no you don't do anything in your videos to bring down anybody my favorite my favorite content that you do is pushing the basket in the supermarket and that song comes on because that's my life four days a week at corner market <laughs> they play they play the 70s on seven and it's the only store that i won't put ear pods in and <laughs> I'll just sit there and it and it and music, you know, music triggers memories anyway. And so I'm listening to the 70s and I'm like, I was working with this young lady today. I'm training her and I told her that's a skating ring song. That's a skating ring song. That's a couple's. It's a couple skate. All couples you. are on the floor for this couple skate. <laughs> couple with, skate. With, with those videos where I'm doing those videos or even like certain music videos that have songs like that in them the one of the top comments i get is i heard that in the skating ring all the time we would always skate to that song like i just did uh dancing in the street uh david bowie and uh mick jagger and that's a big comment on that one we heard that in the skating rink all the time it's one of the main reasons i do that kind of content is nostalgia generation x uh 60s 70s 80s 90s music is because it takes us back to a time that was a little bit more simple. But there are a lot of people who reach for that nostalgia because it puts them in a certain mind, mindset, in a state of mind where you remember your first kiss. You remember going to the skate rink with your friends. You remember walking through the mall and stopping to get yourself like a smoothie or a corn dog seven. You think about those times where you were younger, where you were maybe more hip maybe uh you were you looked a little bit different you had hair for people like me it's just (laughs) you you have those moments where you're transported back to a time in your life that made you feel alive that made you feel happy not that you're not happy now but it's just one of those times where you look back on high school middle school elementary school college you're like wow Mm -hmm. i remember this song this really takes me back So there are a lot of people who do that. And now we hear those songs in the grocery store all the time. You're walking around uh, Rouse's or Winn-Dixie or wherever you are, and you hear this song come on, and you're like, man, and you just are jamming in the middle of the aisle. There's a lot of people who are like that. You know, that's kind of why I started doing it, because we were headed to watch fireworks in South Louisiana, and we stopped at a, a grocery store to pick up some snacks for the road, and I was the one to run in and get it. And this song came on. And I was like, man, I really love that song. So I started looking for it on TikTok. And I was like, I'm just going to put this up against a bag of my phone up against a bag of chips and feel myself singing this song. And it absolutely blew up. So I kept doing it. And people kept loving it and enjoying it. So I kept doing it and kept doing it again. And now it's become one of the calling cards of my social media. And I'm very thankful for it because it is relatable it's real it happens to everyone all the time if you're an adult that goes grocery shopping 
you've heard that one song before that you started singing along to. We can all relate to it. So it's a lot of fun to do that stuff. And I love that so many people can relate to it because it's, you know, a part of who we are now. And a lot of your, your lives now are just, you're, you're spinning, you're playing vinyl, aren't you? No, uh, I'm going straight from a uh, database that's on my, my oh. computer. Um, I wish like I, I do kind of have the technology to do that if I chose to, but no, because that's, it's too much music and I don't have, I have a vinyl collection, but not of the stuff that I get to, I end up playing because it's by request and that would take oh. forever to look through all of the stacks to try to find it just, what I'm looking for. Visually, it looked like you had a turntable in front of you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's my board. I have a, a Harbinger, uh, six channel. It's not okay. nothing too fancy, but it's where I run all of my audio through for my podcast, for my live. Uh, and for that, I have a certain doohickey that will go straight into my phone for the lives. So it's it's cool to be able to use that kind of stuff to really give clear sound and uh, help people continue to be nostalgic and even listen to some newer stuff by some of your favorites. You know, Bon Jovi just came out with a new song last week. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's it's crazy, man, how some of these older artists are now coming out with new music and we're all getting super excited. I was freaking out two weeks ago when Judas Priest came out with a new album. I was like, oh, man, Judas Priest, <laughs> yes, let's do it. Come on. And it sounds fantastic, man. But that's that's you know, that's who I music is a huge part of my life. So getting to share that with literally the world is just mind blowing. But it is beautiful. It means a lot. It's funny you mentioned Bon Jovi because they're having a, they have a new special that's coming out, like a, a documentary about them. Yeah, and I've, and I've seen it advertised on TikTok every time I get on there. Oh yeah, it, it I mean, looks like it's gonna be good. And they've been around forty years, and it just didn't feel like it. It doesn't. It really doesn't. So it's just it's real. It's it's great to see that kind of stuff coming around and see artists like that still thriving and and doing their thing so it's it's, it's amazing i love it that's the one video that you do that kind of makes me feel old is this song is 30 years old today it's like damn so that means i'm like older than that which is old. <laughs> you know there i don't know if you guys know or if you've watched the news or seen how prevalent this is but there's been a big dispute between universal music group and tiktok to where universal music group took all of their music away from the app because universal felt like they weren't getting paid enough so that's like uh taylor swift drake and taylor swift was a huge part of the app and all of her stuff was just taken away gone vanished and there are some other music groups that are affected by that and musicians that are affected by that because they fall under the universal umbrella, even though they're not on, you know, directly on universal music groups label. They are on labels that are associated with universal and all of that music is affected as well. So a lot of those compilation sounds that we, we would use for those type of videos have been muted. And a lot of us don't even touch them anymore because if we do, They'll they have a TikTok has this thing now where they do an automatic copyright check on your sound as you're posting. Like you put your video in and you post, and as you're editing, it'll tell you whether or not you have to, you can post that video. So it's like it's become difficult for creators like myself and some others who are in that same kind of genre of you know this music turns this age this year. Or these are eight songs that will show whether or not you're old or young. <laughs> that kind of stuff. We can't really do a whole bunch of it anymore. So we have to find other ways to like share our love of music. I just mm -hmm. what? did this uh, video. Uh, it's a mashup from this DJ, Eric Rhodes, who did a mashup of Metallica and Teddy Swims. And it is absolutely erupted over social media. It blew up on Instagram. It's got... I want to say like six. Last time I checked, it was getting it was over five million views, and I just posted it like a week ago, maybe. Actually, it was like three or four days ago. It's got like five million views. The one, the version of it on TikTok has over two million. It's or close to two million. It is, and I just posted it on Facebook today, and it's already getting a bunch. It's blowing up, and so it's like 
we are hungering for this music content. We are thr- we are just jonesing for it, and we have to find new ways to get it out there. And thankfully, thankfully there are some music that will not get muted by TikTok. So we're we're thankful for that. And we know it's not going to get muted muted by Instagram because Instagram don't care. All right, those we'll mashups, those mashups are fun. Yeah, a lot of those mashups are fun. It's <laughs> Uh, that's was a that was a large part of my content as well back in the back in the beginning because there was one and I was just talking to the guy who did Metallica Teddy Swims one today about it. There was one that was uh uh Britney Spears Toxic, Rob Zombie Dragula, and the B-52's Love Shack all mixed together in the same song. And it absolutely blew up for the guy who did the DJ Cumberbund so much so in part because of the videos that I posted that really did really, really well. And they were some of my first videos to go over a million views. It blew up so well that he ended up winning a video music award for best mashup of the year. Oh, Through, cool. I, I take, I, so it's to see that kind of thing happen is just amazing, especially when you get to know some of these folks and talk to them through the internet and through DMs and they appreciate what you're doing and you appreciate what they're doing. It's like a mutual appreciation society and we get to do, you know, you get to help them pump their music and put it out there. So it's, and get recognized. It's, it's, it's just so cool to be a part of all of it. And I'm just very thankful that I have had the opportunity. I think one of the first mashups that I ever heard, somebody did took cool in the gang and Van Halen. Yeah. And put them together. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, there's one that I uh, they did it with video. Uh, yeah, it was what was the one that I did? It was uh one, not one that I did, but one that I I used was I want to say it was Van Halen and Stevie Wonder, uh, which was really cool. Uh, I've done a couple of them myself that have done okay on TikTok. My favorite might be uh, Eminem and Leonard Skinner. Uh, Cause I was a big fan of the song uh, "Give Me Back My Bullets" because of them boys, and I mixed that with uh, "Think I Think Till I Collapse," and that did pretty well. Uh, there was another one that I ended up doing. I forget. Oh, gosh, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. I have to go back and look. But some of them have done pretty all right, uh, and it's just. But it the mashups are always cool, and. Uh, I wish I could do them better, but I, I I have to leave that to the professionals now. <laughs> well, I really I really like the one that you've done, where uh, it's like this guy saying you can't call a generation by just playing a song, and it's like those are the best because it's like it doesn't even have to be like one note like Guns and Roses. I knew exactly what that you know. I mean. I think those are kind of fun too, because just like you were saying, Justin, it's like, uh, you know, as soon as you hear that song, you're back, you know, you know exactly when you heard it, you, you've got all these like flooding the memories and you're just like, yeah, you can call a whole generation. <laughs> there was a, uh, the, one of the, the video that I saw of that trend that made me run to my phone and make one of myself. And it was funny uh, how that happened was uh somebody did uh let's go crazy by prince it was my friend sherry and because you know the beginning of let's go crazy is did it beloved we are gathered here today and they're talking about the thing called life and it's like you hear that you automatically know oh yeah yeah this is it and that's one of those first sounds that you hear that can that can call a generation so i i, I we were at uh our homeschool community days on Tuesday, like a, a day like today. And we were in the building doing something. And I run to my wife and I'm like, do we have a merch shirt in the car? Because I was wearing something different. And she doesn't like me to do uh, do any content without merch on. Case in point. Hey, baby, she's watching right now. I have to make sure that I'm wearing this hat because she would kill me if I did any content without a merch on. So she's like, don't do that. So I'm like, do we have a merch shirt in the car? She's like, I think so. And I go in and find one and do uh uh your love by the outfield. Josie's on a vacation far away. And did that video and it just absolutely went nuclear. 
And then I did another one after it, which I think was uh, might have been Footloose the next day. And that one blew up. And then I did Welcome to the Jungle and almost got kicked off of TikTok because they're on the Universal. So oh. I <laughs> so I had to I had to fudge it a little bit, but I was able to get it on. And that one has done really well, too. That one went super went super big on Facebook. Because there were a lot of people on Facebook that like that one did well on Instagram too. So it's like it's just the the way that people relate to the music and how it makes them feel and the memories that it brings back. Thank you, Trisha. I appreciate it. I think so too. So does uh, Kevin Bacon because he shared it, and uh, I think Kenny, and Kenny Loggins already follows me on social, so I know that he dug it. And it's like it's crazy when you do that kind of stuff because it's not it's not me trying to get views it's more of man this is really cool let me go and do that and it makes me think of the things that i really love and i am, that i think are awesome and then you have people in the comments who are like do this song do this song this do this song so then i do that song and they're like thank you i love this song so much it really and the dms fill up with people who are just so happy with the music that's used and you know they talk about how their life has been influenced by music and what it means to them to see the content it just it makes your heart warm to know that it has touched the lives of so many people and it really it it it's just god is good man god is good amen hey everett how are you so glad to see you hey carla and everett hey what's up Okay. Thank y'all for listening. Thank everybody that's in our in our in riding with us tonight over in the chat. It's uh Willie Bucks here, Jason Camden, Trisha Halliburton, Carla Olson, Andrew Hermes, the TNA top 10 is here with us, Allison Fay, Tim Robinson, Daryl with Daryl Rooster. Uh I'm not even trying to butcher his last name, even though he gives me a hard time because I respect I you old. too much. Oh yeah. That's in that Louisiana and, stuff. And then goes the rooster. Yeah. Domino Chris. Domino Chris is an interesting guy. Uh, he he did a tour of 32 baseball parks in Wait, 32 days. days. That's awesome. That's awesome. I've heard every of major league that. park. That's amazing, man. Like that. He drove. Hopefully, Minute Maid Park was his favorite because Minute Maid Park is awesome. It is. Hey, I, I went there last year, actually, in Houston. Is that no, no, no? Wait a minute. That's Tampa. Yeah, I'm going there this year. I'm going there this year. Yeah, Minute Maid so. Park is dope. I've gotten a, a nice little tour of Minute Maid, and it's it's really awesome. So yeah, I'll be hitting it up in July. You're gonna love it. You're it's a baseball fan, Tampa. Nick. I am. I love the Astros. I'm a big Astros fan. Uh, yeah. I'm very excited with uh, spring training, and you know. I'm one of those guys who, when pitchers and catchers report, I'm like hyped up. Just yes, <laughs> let's get it. I'm a big sports guy. Love me some baseball, uh, and I cannot wait for baseball baseball season to start. I think it's going to be a good one, a very interesting one. Hot stove this year has been kind of fun seeing where these guys are going. So I'm interested to see how the season is going to start out. That's right. I, I I went to Houston last year. Uh, my dad and my brother and I go to a park to watch the Reds on the road every year. So we went to oh, Houston last year. And we're actually going to Tampa this year. So as uh, Nick said, play ball here in the next coming week. We're going to be ready. That's it, man. I'm like, this is a great time for sports. You know, people think football season is over and there's no sports to watch. But we got March Madness. We got baseball starting up. Hockey's getting to a good point. You got uh, basketball is heating up, getting ready for the playoffs. The Pelicans are looking real good right now. The Pelicans are looking pretty tight That's right NASCAR. now. Of course, you got the NASCAR. <laughs> Dave, uh, this is your car right here. This is Dave's car that he drove. Oh, back in the day. Is. He is an elderly. He needs those types of things. <laughs> I'm not that elderly. You should get Bluetooth to sponsor the show, Dave. I don't know. I would <laughs> love. To, I would love to. That's what I'm going to know. I made it in podcasting. Reach out, they'll be that there. That is my, that is my. That's that's why I started podcasting because I want I want a hot dick pills. I think <laughs> Teppy's hoping we get a Bluetooth sponsorship as well. <laughs> my, or maybe she's hoping we don't. That's probably what it is. She's probably hoping we don't. 
I'm sorry, guys. I took this officially off the rails. I apologize to those for watching. <laughs> Who are who are like, what is happening right now? We, we oh, this is we're mild tonight. We're wild tonight. It's very mild. I, my fault. It's my fault. I do want to ask you, Nick, about the you were talking about your merch. I really do like your hat. How did you come up with you know that kind of slogan, that kind of artwork? How did that all come about? Well, it was inspired by uh, some artwork that I seen uh, that uh, when I was in San Francisco. And it was like, you know, we, you know, all in this together or something like that with a bunch of peace signs. And I tried to look for the shirt online and, you know, where I could possibly get one. And it was it was nowhere to be found. Nowhere. So, like, you know, I said, I can't find it. I'll just make one that's kind of like it, you know, and like contour to what I would want to do or what something that's important to me. I believe that music is a unifier. It is very important to me for music to be a you know that people know that i that to know that music is supposed to unify and not divide i remember specifically uh being a younger man and li loving you know metallica and alice in chains and megadeth and uh listening to the country and being a big fan of like joe diffie and travis trid and all of this stuff and people being like why are you listening to that white folk music i'm like whoa, 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 whoa. first of all music is music you can like whatever you want to like. I don't say anything to you when I see you bumping Snoop Dogg across campus because that I don't say, well, why are you listening to my music? You should be listening to your music. That's <laughs> not what music is meant for. Music is a uniter. Music bring is supposed to bring people together. And through the content that I put out and, you know, the people that I've been able to work with, uh we've been able to really bring music to the masses and show them that music is for all it's for everybody it's for all shapes all sizes all colors all creeds all nationalities you can listen to whatever you want to listen to and you can love whatever you want to love one of the biggest places that i am uh that is one of the places where i'm biggest is brazil i have people from brazil in my comment section in my lives all the time come to brazil we love you in brazil Thank you for what you do. And part of that is because of the uh, remix of the ABCs that I did to uh, Corn's Coming Undone. Corn is big in Brazil. That article and that video went worldwide. So people in Brazil were like, we love this man. He loves hard rock music and he loves Corn. We love him. Bring him to Brazil. We love him. Obrigada. We love you. So it's like, okay, cool. I'm big in Brazil. That's amazing. People from Italy have been like, man, we love you. Uh, South Africa, uh, of course, the UK. I was in the UK for a month last year doing a Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge. And so they, it's crazy. The first day I was in the UK, I'm on an elevator going up to my hotel room, and I, somebody's in the elevator. They're like, wait a minute. Are you that guy who does those videos on TikTok? It's like, yeah, yeah, and man, I love your stuff. And this is halfway around. This is across the pond, as they would say. So it's like it's just it's really amazing the reach that these videos have and the reach that the music in the videos have and how it really tends to bring people together. So I'm just that's what the content is about, and that's how we came up with rock we rock together because we do, and that's it has all the colors, all the people on the hands right there. And there are people now all over the world that are wearing the shirts, wearing the hats, uh, rocking the stickers, rocking the symbol, just everybody. Like, it's it's so cool to know that there are so many people who uh, pour into the message and that relate to the message. And what's really cool is that through We Rock Together, we've been able to give back. A large majority of the, the, uh, the merch that we have a portion of it goes to a local food bank here in Tangibahoa Parish where I live, uh, Our Daily Bread. And for the red merchandise, because we have red shirts and hoodies that we do, a portion of those go to the American Heart Association for their Go Red campaign. So our merch, no matter what it is, goes to a good cause. And it is able to pour into communities and pour into organizations that are all about helping people and you know giving to those who need it most so it, it's not only 
uh, something that can convey our message of unity through music, but also something that can help give back and help you give back as well. And that's that's just the coolest thing ever. That's beautiful. I love it. It's just, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, man, I love it, and that's what God, that's what God intended. Like seriously, can you? Uh, you mentioned it. Let's talk about it. Um, Thanks, brother. I your Hot Wheels it. challenge. Yes, I had a video clip prepared, but I decided to. I chickened out because I don't want to take a chance of finding out. I don't want to. I don't want to draw the wrath of NBC. <laughs> no, dude. I think, you'll be fine. I think you're fine. I, I legit think you're fine. Like they didn't even renew it for season two. We just. I heard the news today that the show has not been renewed renewed for season two. So I, people have done it before. I think you'll be fine. Don't if you're scared. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. I can act it out if you want to, or I can just talk about it. What was the clip? What was the clip? And the winning super fan is. Nick! No! In this <laughs> oh, dude, that's totally fine. I put that on my social media. I think you're oh, I, I made it. I made it a quick clip. Yeah, that <laughs> was, and I can tell you, I, just looking at that, I already know that is from uh, the Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge Best Builds, which is the after show that they did for every episode that's on YouTube right now. So, Steffi, can you go? Can you go back to that picture real quick? Oh, oh, I thought we had the super fan is. Pause it there. Yeah, that that is the face that I give after I went to Gold Star Chili and I just got to the toilet. Right oh, there. great! <laughs> now, whenever I think of my win, my national oh. televised reality show, I will think of you having to go to the loo because you had. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Absolute that's relief. It looks Thank like you. absolute relief and joy, and that's pretty oh, much. Oh God, what I can't doing. believe. Thank you, Justin. We, that's why we can't have nice things, Justin. Look at you. <laughs> You you are definitely like the 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 class of the organization Viagra and Chill. Right. You've been drinking right. today. Thanks, my brother. I appreciate. It. <laughs> but let's go back to this car. Okay, it's a oh, yeah. car. Car. Yeah. And it's... you're dancing in the back of it with Big E. Yeah. Who it's... is my bucket list rest current wrestler to meet? <sighs> He's amazing. It's a good bucket list guy to have because he is absolutely he just seems like awesome. genuinely the best dude. He is. He really is. Like, like it's being a fan of professional wrestling and being a fan of guys like the New Day. Uh, it's just it's always crazy when you get to meet them in that kind of environment because. It was surreal for me for multiple reasons. Uh, right around that time where they brought E onto the show because he didn't come on until one of the later days of filming because it was towards the end of our build. He, uh, I had just got one of my videos shared on Instagram by T-Pain because T-Pain came out with this uh, cover album and he did uh, War Pigs by Black Sabbath and absolutely nailed it. And so he shared it on his Instagram and the host of the show. Well, one of the hosts of the show, um, 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 hurt her trust Eugene. He, who's now a part of T pain's racing team. Funny enough, uh, walks up to me and he's like, so, uh, no, it was the host Rutledge, Rut Rutledge Wood. He walks up and goes, so, uh, did T pain share your video? I was like, I don't know, did he? I'm not exactly sure. Because I hadn't checked my Instagram yet that day. So she's like, I think he did. So I ran to my phone, which was on offset. Uh, look at my phone, and sure enough, T-Pain had shared my video on IG in his story. And right after that, they say they have a special surprise guest judge for that show. And they look directly at me, and they're like, Nick, we know you're a big WWE fan, so you're going to know who this is. Here's our guest judge, Big E. And I was like, y'all are screwing with me because they had done cut. They had done, like, filming before on and on that episode, on the, at the beginning, before we started really filming the episode, 
where they do a thing where they're acting like there's a guest judge coming down because there are guest judges on some episodes and some episodes they weren't. So they do it and then lo and behold, here comes Big E walking down the ramp onto the set. So the reaction that you see on the episode of me seeing Big E for the first time was extremely genuine and super real because I was marking the frick out. To see Big E, because much like he is your one of your bucket list guys to meet, for me, the entire New Day is back bucket list. They're yeah. three of my favorites of all time. And he especially because that was, you know, he had been injured for a while after that. But, you know, him winning Money in the Bank, him becoming WWE champion, uh, it was it was something that really meant a lot to me representation wise. Well, because it was just really cool to see somebody you know, somebody like me that was at the top of the business. And so to meet him in person and to get to shake his hand and to get to share that same energy with me, because people think I have a lot of energy. Good God. Hang out with Big E for half a day. And so we're on set and I started talking to him, talking to him because we have some people that we know in common that are wrestlers. Uh, he knows, uh, somebody that I've met through like uh, social media, Faye Jackson, who was a fantastic wrestler. And he's like, yeah, I know who you are, man. Like everybody, we all know who you are. We we see your videos. We, we know who you are. And that was the confirmation for me because I've been told for years by people who were in the business, dude, the boys know who you are. They've watched your videos. They've seen your stuff. The boys know who you are. And for years, I poo-pooed it. I shunned it. Nah, they don't know why I'm. You're lying. The boys don't know me. And then he confirmed it when he's like, yeah, we know who you are. I'm seeing your videos. We watch them, we watch them all the time. Yeah, we know who you are. And that just, I didn't even have to win. Like, I didn't even have to win. I was like, I've already won. I'm on network television. I'm in England for the first time in my life, living, enjoying life. And I'm I've met one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Well, I don't have a whole lot of the current. I I don't have a whole lot of the current people, current wrestlers in my collection. Now you know I'm an old school guy. Grow up in Texas. Everybody knows that. For me, it's Ric Flair, and it, just like you, I we, we grew up with the same stuff. Yeah, and but but the, the New Day has a shelf on this wall over here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's got the cereal i got the limited edition tag team belt all their action figures i love yeah. the new day as you and, should and i bought my day. son bootios one year for christmas <laughs> and they 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 make sure you ain't booty but they do not taste great i even uh, got the book on how not to be booty well you should because you're booty all the time and we're still in the middle of your performance review by the way <laughs> i have not forgotten about that so you need to stop bo- being booty during some of these matches. Maybe you should crack open a box of them bootios and get to it. Um, but no, me, he was just amazing. And I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have met him and to have shared that with him. Cause now, especially now after the news we got today, uh, it's going to be, you know, it's in a time capsule. It's one of a kind, something that will never be, that may never be replicated again. Uh, so we were part of the only people who were able to do this amazing and really cool thing where we get, and it's nostalgia again, because the show was going, uh, getting cars from your past and turning them into life-size Hot Wheels. And that's what we were able to do with the Mardi Gras Mania was turn my dad's old car, not the actual car, but a car just like it into a life-size Hot Wheel. And they ended up winning that episodes and getting me to the finale where I came this close to winning the whole shooting match. So it's like, I was hoping for a season two so much like Cody, I could finish my story, but it doesn't like that's going to happen. So, sadly, no. Well, it looked, like a, it looked like a real cool endeavor. I didn't know that you that, that you were doing that. Now, I knew you'd gone to England, but I wasn't aware that that's why you were over there. Yeah, we were kind of sworn to secrecy, you know, non-disclosure agreements and that kind of thing. Where I could say that I was going to England, but I just couldn't say why. Because then you you notice during the show we never mention that we're in England. We just say you know we're in this place building these cars, 
and the news about it at the beginning when they first started announce the show, it never really mentioned that it was in, they were filming in England. It was just like, you know, we're doing this show. So most people thought we were in L.A., but we were in uh, Manchester, England for a month filming the show, and it was really cool. Did you get um, have much downtime over there? Get to get to tour or a little bit. Uh, I got to go to. I got to hang out with uh, Tom Campbell of uh, Cultaholic for a day because uh, he invited me out to uh, Newcastle because they have North Wrestling in Newcastle and got to go to a show of theirs for a little bit because I had to get back on the train and get back to film for the next day, so I couldn't really stay. But it was cool to get to hang out with Tom for a little while. Uh, I was actually able to go to a local pub and watch WrestleMania, or at least the first night of WrestleMania, because it was, you know, over there, it's a six-hour difference. So with WrestleMania starting at 7 o'clock here, it was, I was told there would be no man. (laughs) 1 o'clock in the morning there, and it was a three-hour show, so... One o'clock in the morning to four o'clock in the morning, then I have to go in and film at like five or six. So it was, just, it was just like I the second out of WrestleMania, I was like, no, I'm gonna watch this in my bed in my room, so I can actually get up in the morning and go do stuff. Because I may, I think I might have been late to the set that day. So I was like, yeah, I I, I can't do this again. So it's um, but it it was a great experience meeting wrestling fans across the pond the pond because you know in England. It's just a different animal with how people are. And in Newcastle, it was amazing to go and watch one of those shows, shows for North Wrestling because some of those cats who were on that show, uh, you see now uh, in like AEW and Impact because uh, Leon Slater, uh, the youngest in charge, he was in a tag team with uh, this guy named uh, Darius, uh, and they have a, had a tag team called uh, Boisterous Behavior. And they were North Tag Team Champions, and they took on uh, Zach Knight and somebody else, you know, Paige's brother, because he's now in AEW. So I got to see him wrestle over in Newcastle with North Wrestling. And I know that there are a couple of other people who are on that show. that Because I know right now everybody knows Tom Campbell because of his dealings with uh, Jeff Jarrett and how the new the uh, Total Nonstops no, the total nonstop a holes nickname came directly from Tom Campbell, and that's my guy. So it's like he still got that stuff going. They they were talking about him on Conrad's podcast with Jeff Jarrett like the other day. So to get to hang out with him, see the Cultaholic Studios, uh, watch North Wrestling show was just really cool. So I still got to feed into my love of wrestling even while I was in England. That was very cool. You mentioned uh, the time difference. Uh, let's get your opinion on what's going on with the WWE right now and their overseas PLEs. Did would you I rather would oh, you I'm rather sorry. them be tape delayed? Nope. It, or or is it? I'm I'm with you. Then I think it's cool that I mean it was on at four o'clock in the morning, and you'd have to get because I, I don't. I don't I don't want something spoiled for me before I get a chance to see it. And we in this day and age, it's almost hard, impossible to to dodge spoilers. But for me, you know, they're gonna have the show in Germany. They had the show in Australia. I can see a time that maybe we'll get a WrestleMania in England. I think it's it's coming. It's coming. It's going to happen because they can't let all in be the the one show in England that just has the most attendance they can they they're not going to be able to live with that and WrestleMania would absolutely just blow everything out of the water and you can and with it being on Peacock you can really watch it whenever you want to like Elimination Chamber you didn't have to get up and watch it yeah it was on live but you didn't have to get up and watch it you could have watched it when you woke up uh, that morning you didn't really have to watch it live but a lot of people are going to choose to watch it live especially if they cover professional wrestling on social media because then you get the top t- the hot takes before anybody else and I'll tell you this like do you want them to tape delay Wrestle Kingdom? What about any NJPW no. stuff? Any All Japan? Do you want them Noah? Do you want them to do any of that stardom? You want them to tape delay that? Like, 
we are in a day and age in professional wrestling where now as American fans, we get to see how fans in other parts of the world feel when they're watching our stuff. Because there are a lot of people in other parts of the world that are staying up till 1, 2 o'clock. Like I told you, I was watching WrestleMania in the pub at 1 o'clock in the morning getting a bionic elbow from a dude dressed up like Dusty Rhodes. Like it was, <laughs> it was just an amazing experience to be over there to watch this kind of stuff. So I can't wait for WrestleMania or something of that or like that to be over to be across the pond. And the w, and WWE is all about globalization and expansion. You know, they're doing shows in France. They're going to do a SmackDown in France. You know, it's it's cool. It's really cool to see that kind of stuff. And to be a part of that. So, no, I do not want them to tape delay it. I want them to have it live because we can. I can still get up and watch it at another time if I want to. But it's like I told my wife during the Elimination Chamber, baby, you can stay in bed. I'm setting an alarm. I'm getting up for 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to watch the Elimination Chamber. Then I overslept for 45 minutes and missed the first match, which was the Women's Chamber match. But then I went back and watched that later and watched the rest of it live. Like, it's... you. That's my only issue with Peacock is... You can't. You have you join in progress, but until it's me. over with, you can't go back and watch it from the beginning. Yeah, so it's that 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 is a little, uh, you know, it's it's kind of difficult. And but I'm not paying fifty dollars. I'm not paying fifty dollars a pop to watch it, so I can live with it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I get that, but I mean, it's like you have to have the opportunity to. Uh, so you have the opportunity to watch it live if you want to, and if you don't, you can just wait to watch it on tape delay. But I mean, I'd rather watch it live, so I'm, that's just how I am. Peacock could tell me that I have to stand on my head to watch it. I'd do it because I'm not paying fifty dollars a pop now to do it. So it's like, no. no. <laughs> I'll tell you, I paid I paid fifty dollars to watch that last AEW pay per view, Sting's last match, and that card. I was thoroughly thoroughly entertained. I did not have buyer's remorse. I, I thought that was probably the best show that they've put on so far. Oh, it was great. With the exception of the uh, scramble match, I liked every part of it. The scramble match wasn't terrible, but it, that that's really just being nitpicky. Yeah. Because it, everything was great. It's just that one was like, you know, it's it's okay. You know, it's it's cool. I'm not mad about it. Well, yeah. Osprey, Osprey and um, Takeshita were just... I mean, stole the show. That Will Ospreay is such a special. Will Ospreay is the real deal. Will Ospreay is the real deal. Like, there's, there's no other way to put it other than Will Ospreay is just he's the real deal. The guy is special. He's super, super special, and it's, it's fun that we get to to see him in his prime right now to watch him at his absolute best, and I'm very thankful that we have the opportunity to uh to watch what he's doing right now because he 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 is one of the best in the world if not the best in the world right now i know there are people who will sit there and be upset because of the new how is he the best in the world when you still have brian danielson how is he the best in the world when we still have uh 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 uh, um um, chad gable who i i think is severely underrated chad gable is super underrated but it's you have to give credit where credit is due. And if you don't like the high flying stuff, just say you don't like the high flying stuff. But Will Ospreay is one of the best wrestlers in the world right now, if not the best in the world right now. And I will stand 10 toes down on that one. Yeah, he's uh, that style of wrestling wouldn't normally be something that I'd be interested in. But he's so good at it, the presentation that it was just pure joy for me to watch, and I didn't pick it apart. And it's like I right. didn't question any of it. As a matter of fact, he came on my radar at the G1 in Dallas when he wrestled Lance Archer. Uh huh. And he was Boy. much smaller at the time against Archer, and it was such a good match. Bro, look, you and I both know because we've seen it in person, like real close up. Lance Archer can make a paper bag look like a million dollars. When you want to talk about somebody that's severely underrated and not given the credit that they're deserved, Lance Archer goes real close to the top of that list. 
He's funny. He's charismatic. But in the ring, he he can do his thing. And I I love working with Archer. I love seeing him work on AEW when he's on. And I love seeing the stuff that he does in Japan. He's just, he's super talented. I don't think people give him the credit that he deserves for how good he really is. And he's been that good and that consistent for years. Oh, I've told him, you know, I don't know if you know this or not. That was my trainer. I did not know that. Lance Archer. Lance Archer is is the reason I'm a referee now. Yeah. Uh, But I told him that one of my favorite matches he's ever did is a uh, was a TV match against Abyss in the six sided ring. Uh-huh. Lance was flying around that thing like a like a cruiserweight, and he didn't win the match. But I still think it's one of the best matches I've ever seen him in. Oh man, Hoyt has he he moves around like a smaller guy, and there are a lot of smaller guys who look up to him, especially those who you know came up in the DFW area and wrestled in Dallas. And in that area for a long time, because to a lot of guys from that area, he is just he is the 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 standard bearer. You know, he's the he's the standard. He's the line. And they try to get to where he was and is. And it's just again, just watching him, especially like he's just he's what a big man is supposed to be. And yes. watching the stuff that he did with uh, Jimmy Rave and TNA was really cool. The character work they did, but also just how good he was in the ring and how much care he had for the people he was working with. Because that's the real thing is when you can take care of your partner and you can make them look good. And if you're both doing that, you're going to have an outstanding match. Yeah, I, I, I could sit here just sing his praises all day long we got uh, a question from the chat real quick from uh domino chris there it is nick what is the best po boy place <laughs> in the world and why is it parkway uh <laughs> it's parkway but <laughs> there are some other really good places too where you can get po boys um uh what is it uh weed at out in new orleans if you're willing to make go in to go into that area in New Orleans, we that really good. We that uh, I think that's the name of that's what they're called. Yeah. We that I may be yeah. mistaken. I've been there one time and I was just well, on the, the floor. Saints, the New Orleans Saints say who that, so that's probably we that is yeah, the yeah. Like his so is putting things together, Justin. Look at that guy. He's yeah. Look at check out the big brain on Brad. Look yeah, at that. but there's there's some. There's some really good places in New in, in New Orleans and around the, uh, the the North Shore, and even on the West Bank. If you're willing to venture into the West Bank, there's some really good places out there too. Uh, there's some sometimes you just gotta look for some of these places that you can find where they got these really good po boys. Uh, you got your your, your ah, man, it's like the debris, the the the, the catfish, the document man, God. Dogged, I just, love an oyster po- po- boy. I'm going with an oyster woo! Po- woo! I'm already full, man. I just had dinner and I'm already full, so I don't need to be talking about all this stuff because I'll go and get a po boy right now. I can't, <laughs> can't do that. I can't yeah. handle it. I'm trying to quit the carbs and y'all trying to put the French, French bread directly into my mouth. Just like <laughs> calm down, folks, please. I know there's a place, there's a place here that this 15 minutes from my house that I can get a pretty good catfish po boy. Oh. Man, I know mm. that bread. You man, have der- just- once again, we have been derailed by things that <laughs> the rest of Thank you so much, Domino, for that comment. Get some. De- oh, look, man, let me tell you something. Uh-oh. I was in the quarter a couple weeks ago and we got some dead dog. I think I got the, the, or the what was a werewolf or something like that. It oh, whoo. Law, that was that was a time that was oh that dog yes that dog crushes lucky dog so if you're in New Orleans go get that dog don't mess with lucky dog because lucky dog is only for if you've had too many hand grenades and you need a lifesaver real quick you go get a lucky dog if you want to sit and enjoy your dog get some that dog because that's where you, that's where it's at Brandon you on top with that that's magnifique. Shit's 
multiple hand grenades or too many hand grenades. <laughs> Adam, hey, I lived in Ohio for a while. I'm not going to have you disrespect Skyline Chili. This is See? not that kind of roast, buddy. It's not what we're doing. Let's let's not let's not disrespect Skyline. Just don't put it on your spaghetti. Like, don't do that. Oh, I'm crap. putting it on the spaghetti. I'm putting it on no, the spaghetti. Don't do that. But look, don't let's not talk about it. there's there's nothing wrong with a good bowl of skyline chili. Let's <laughs> let's not do that. Go to United Dairy Farmers, get you a shake, Ooh. and then later, Ooh. you know, Ooh. top it off with some skyline chili. And then tell your wife she needs to stay in another house. For that evening, <laughs> you're about to be, sorry you're about, about your damn luck. Too, like you trombone shorty. So let's just just have <laughs> just, just be careful with those combinations of meals, please, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Tooting like trombone shorty. I've never said that before, but I will be using that every day. <laughs> Tooting like trombone shorty makes me so happy to say. <laughs> Oh, well, Nick, I can't thank you enough for your time tonight. I have man, had the baby. best time talking to you, and I feel oh, like we, we, we could go to midnight. And it'd be we easy. really could, and I know that y'all have other stuff to do and I got stuff to do, but that link right there, I need to talk about it real quick for since I have wrestling fans and wrestling people here in the chat. There is an app that I'm working with right now called Next Level. Next Level is an app by wrestling fans for wrestling fans, and they have an outstanding giveaway going on right now where you can win two tickets to night two of WrestleMania, two tickets to the Raw after WrestleMania, hotel stay while you're in Philly, and transportation between your hotel and the link. All you have to do is go to this link and download the Next Level app. When you go there, you'll be prompted to enter their contest to win those tickets to WrestleMania, tickets to the Raw after WrestleMania, and uh, hotel and transpo. Next level is where you it's like TikTok for wrestling fans. To me, it's like if TikTok and Twitter had a baby because you can post videos, you can post pictures, you can post news articles, you can post any kind of media into the feed, and it's just a ton of wrestling fans watching other wrestling fans make content and share stories and news. So all you have to do is go to that link, download the Next Level app, and enter for your chance to win two trips. And and follow me, by the way. Do that, too. But (laughs) go to Next Level, download the app, uh, enter for your chance to win two tickets to WrestleMania Night 2, two tickets to the Raw after WrestleMania, and to win a hotel and transpo while you're there. And while you're on that Connect link, go check out the merchandise. We have shirts. We have hats. We have hoodies. I, we just put a new zip up hoodie on the site. It's kind of like CM Punk zip up hoodie. It's so dope. I wear it every day. Uh, we have mugs. We have ties. We have garden flags for those who garden. We have all kind of stuff. We have stickers, all kind of things that the merch can do. And this hat is just a really cool hat. And it's for it's great for people with gigantic heads like mine. It's adjustable and it's really great. Rooster, I'm looking at you. Take off that big old cowboy hat and get you one of these bad boys right here. You'll be the greatest dude in the saloon. So go ahead and check out the next level. My next, my connect. uh, Go check my connect link in all of my uh, social media stuff. And that is the link right there. If you want to just write that down and then go directly to the link, and it'll take you to a place where you can download next level into the contest. Check out the merch. Check out the content and see all of my different social media things. I have a cameo. If you would like to purchase a cameo video uh, that is a personalized video for you and your people. And I always do a lot of fun stuff with the music and that kind of thing with the cameo videos. I have the Spotify playlist that I have, which is just music that I use in content and music that I use in my lives. There's old school, there's new school, there's rap, there's hip hop, there's uh, metal, there's rock, there's alternative. There's all kinds of stuff on the playlist. So go check that out. My YouTube channel where I have my podcast with my wife hanging with the Harrisons and my uh, wrestling podcast, the, uh, the, pl- the pay window with Prophet Sloan, where we go back and watch old wrestling and make fun of it. It's very fun. Uh, we've had MLW champion Alex Kane and a couple of other uh, really uh, some well-known people in the uh, wrestling social media game. So I'm very thankful for that. And we're going to have new episodes of that coming up pretty soon. Dave, we may be giving you a call, my friend. Uh, the please do 
I'm trying to run down all the stuff. It's always a lot. Uh, like I said, the merch gives back to our daily bread here in Tangibahoa Parish and the American Heart Association. Shout out to 26 Shirts, our vendors for that, who are the guys who put out all the merch for like Bill's Mafia. Uh, Dale Reed and the guys from 26 Shirts are just absolutely fantastic. And thank you to them. Of course, all of the social media, Mr. Professor 318 on all social media platforms. It's X for X, or it's the Professor 318 because I got kicked off of x on my old account because they flagged a bunch of my videos that had music on them and they were like yeah you can't do this so we're gonna make you mm. it. so i did a backup account and it's doing pretty well but go and follow that it'll be greatly appreciated uh, of course the facebook the instagram the tiktok any minute any moment now the instagram is going to hit six hundred thousand followers which is just dumb but uh, I'm very thankful for that. Of course, the TikTok is at 1.8 million. And the content there is just doing well and doing very good. 24.8 million likes. Yeah, that's just stupid. But I, I saw somebody the other day that had like 100 and, 101 or 111 million likes, which is just crazy. But there's some folks who have that kind of following. Like Snoop Dogg has like 24 million followers on Instagram. And I'm talking about my 600,000 like it's huge or something. It's okay. It's piddly <laughs> compared to some of these other people. So it's like I'm just very thankful because the wrestling community has, you know, poured into the content and they really like the content. And I get messages all the time from people uh, who are a part of the business that really love what they're doing. Oh, yeah. By the way, Wildcat Sports in New Orleans, they have a show coming up April 20th. In New Orleans, Mick Foley will be the guest commissioner for the show, and uh, I'll be there as well, uh, hanging out and doing stuff. Uh, Katie Forbes is on the show. You know, RVD's wife, uh, she's on the show, and she'll be doing some stuff, and a couple of other people as well. And it's the return of Luke Hawks. Uh, Luke, stop. The, get him off the screen. Get, get, get that off. <laughs> uh, He's not wrong. No, he he does he does that. Like, stop it. You no, stop it. Uh, you know, I, that's not what I do it for. It's to stop it. But uh, who is it? Um, Luke Hawks, uh, who did a lot of the choreography or helped with a lot of the choreography for the Iron Claw movie that just came out last year. And he is, uh, you know, he's real tight with uh, Cassidy Riley. Uh, they've got a, He's coming back and he's coming back for a match. Uh, on the 20th, so make sure you come in town for that. Uh, of course, why you independent wrestling is everywhere. He being Luke, huh? He being Luke, Luke's what? coming back, Luke Hawks. Yes, okay, Luke. Hawks. I just want to clear up it wasn't Cassidy Riley coming back. No, 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 it's Luke, not Cassidy. Oh. No, no, no. Luke Hawks is coming back on April 20th for the for, for, uh, for a match, uh, which is going to be really good. Uh, we just finalized a deal with a beard company, but I don't know if I can talk about it, so I will let y'all know about that. It'll be in the connect link as soon as we get the go ahead to do all of that stuff, but yeah, uh, I think for, that's all this. That's the whole spiel, I think. Well, I for, think. For, for our listeners that are on the audio version, the, the link that he's talking about is nxconnect.me yes. forward slash Mr. Professor 318. That's correct. One more time, nxconnect.me forward slash Mr. Professor 318. Go to that uh, for your chance to win two tickets to WrestleMania, two tickets to the Raw, hotel, um, hotel accommodations, and transportation to the link. Yes, yeah, so make sure you download the app. Like, if you're going to do it, download the app so that you can enter. Download it through that link and uh, just have fun because it's a great app it's a lot of fun to post the content it's very easily to easy to manage like i said it's like tiktok it's like tiktok and reels but just exclusively for wrestling fans and sports fans it's just a really cool app so i would get down on that asap and get in on it because it's gonna blow up it's gonna get big and you can say you were in on the ground floor before all these other people start drove into it and all these big wrestlers come over and they're like oh man i'm on it i'm on next level you can say yeah i was on next level last year buddy get out of here you don't know what you're talking about well, see you later i know we'll be on next level by the end of the night well you go ahead and do that and uh the folks the next level will greatly appreciate it because again it's a great community a lot of uh wrestling creators like myself 
and some of the other uh, con, man, con man, uh, my buddy Connor, uh, Mr. Tesca, uh, all these big wrestling creators from TikTok and Instagram have all started to migrate to next level because, first of all, we don't know what's going to happen with TikTok. So that will be one of our outlets. If TikTok, if something does happen to TikTok, next level will be next man up. So make sure you go out and download the app and get a part, of, become a part of that today. And when you do enter to win tickets to night to WrestleMania, two tickets to Raw after WrestleMania, a hotel and transportation between the hotel and the link while you're in town, it's gonna be it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Well, Nick, thank you so much. Um, anything we can ever do for you, don't hesitate to reach out. The door is always open for you to come on. Anything that you're going to come on and promote. I mean, so maybe the eight or ten people that don't know anything about you will hear it. <laughs> oh, you and Josh going to stop, man. But thank you, Dave. I appreciate Justin. Thank you, Amy. You guys are amazing. Uh, thank you for having me on. It has been an absolute pleasure and delight, and I would love to come on again at some point because I just love it. There were so many people friends of mine from uh uh the monroe area who were like wait so the the pond water dave is he's that he's that guy that they talk yeah, yeah. to that. <laughs> that, that's one he's the one they're like oh man i did not know yeah 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 yeah. that's my boy well, just stop it that's my dude like the dude that was on rick flair's last match and you know the dude that conrad talked yeah, 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 yeah that's him so like, oh man that's so dope i was like yeah i know i get to be on his show that's right <laughs> yeah so that's um, all right. I was all day like professor's gonna be on my show. I'm gonna <laughs> get Nick Harrison on my show. It's it's I, I was I've been so excited, man. Like I, I was gonna eat dinner in here, so I didn't miss it. And my wife was like, it's like half an hour away. I said, I don't care. I want to eat dinner in here, so I'm already sitting in front of the camera, so I'm ready for Dave's show. So I'm just very uh appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. And if nobody's told y'all today, you are loved, you're appreciated, you're important, you're more than enough, exactly as you are. And always remember to be great. It's been an honor and a privilege and a pleasure. And I'll be happy to come back on anytime. Thank you, Nick. Love you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Who's to go to bed? It's way past your bedtime. Go to bed. <laughs> Nick Harrison, everybody. Yay. Nick Harrison, thank you. All right, y'all. That was Fixing wonderful. That he was is a great, so, such a great guy. Yes, he is. Hey, and he didn't just be recently become a great guy. He's been a great guy since the, I mean, he's a, once you meet him, mm -hmm. I mean, he's just such a great guy. Uh, you, you can't help but love him. Um, I agree. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's um, Timmy C and TJ Stevens are out in the waiting room. Why don't we bring them in? See if they want to play trivia. Okay. Like because Timmy's got his glasses on. I can tell he's ready. <laughs> and the great TJ Stevens. Hi. Hey, I wasn't talking my wrestling. nose just now. What are you guys doing? <laughs> We're gonna. We're getting uh, ready to do a little trivia. I'm in. I'm terrible at it, but I'm in. TJ had his wiener out, he said. I don't know. No, I oh. called you a wiener. Mm. Same me, uh... thing. Are you ready? Do you want to do a little trivia? Oh, yeah. Born we're ready. definitely going to do some trivia. Um, okay. Ready to embarrass myself? It's time for Amy's Trivia. Let's play and see. I like it. Where did you get that song from? <laughs> I love it. Was that Justin singing it? That was, me. <laughs> that was courtesy of the great J.D. Hoop. Of course. I feel he was, so special. He doesn't sound like that. <laughs> I'm person. Did y'all well, uh, did y'all happen to catch the opening of the show tonight? I I joined late because uh, oh I'll I'll put children, the video I'll you know. put the video in the group chat later. But oh we have I've, we have like an opening we have an opening video and theme song now. Look at that. Yeah, it's it's very '80s sitcom theme song. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it was it Night Corp? No, I wish. 
Mm. No. Uh, By the way, Nick Harrison, you of super like... interesting dude. Huh? I said Nick Harrison, super interesting dude. Yes, oh, yeah, he he's is. great. Uh, I love his videos. They are fun. It just, uh, it, it, and I, he just, but the ones he does in the supermarket are my, by far my favorite because they hit the <laughs> hardest for me because that's just me. Uh, my grandson actually asked me this weekend when I was, I was playing music in the car. He said, Papa, you don't like any new music, do you? <laughs> like, no, no, it's terrible. <laughs> We're I listening. brought my I brought my We're son up to Grand team. Funk Railroad. We're listening <laughs> to Journey, and you will shut up back there. There is nothing wrong with Journey. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. oh, Jesus! Who let him in? I heard that Peter McPuffin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, let's let's get on the road with this trivia because I got to get up. I got to get up and take um, the the missus to the airport in the middle of the effing night. Sweet. <laughs> Nice. We haven't started trivia. We're no, talking. I'm getting ready to start it. Oh. So, well, what I was going to say is, in lieu of Mister of the Professor being from Louisiana, I chose WrestleMania 30 to have our trivia about. So, the a. first question. A. Yeah. What? It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. Uh, hey, I got to throw the flag on that. You ask me which WrestleMania I went to. Was that yeah. so you could go with the other one? Um, <laughs> kinda. Yes. <laughs> well, you went, to th- you went to 33. Let's talk about 30. That was mm-hmm. nice. oh, Although man. I think the Ultimate Warrior and Mr. T would have been way more entertaining. Absolutely. <laughs> I was at the Hall of Fame. I was at the Hall of Fame at that one. And- Mr. T? Yeah. And I oh, actually, I'd have left. I actually popped everybody that was sitting around us. Because I called my mother and told my mother that I loved her very much. So wait, you were at Mr. T's Hall of Fame induction? Yes. How are you here then? Because you're still there <laughs> listening on. to that. <laughs> He's still there talking about are, Mama. His, love for, his, his correct. love for his mother went Broadway. Mm. <laughs> it's Steve Austin. That was very good. I enjoyed that. All right. <laughs> Next question. Who won the Vicky Guerrero Divas Championship oh, Invitational for the Divas Championship? Was it AJ Lee, Natalia, Tamina, or Naomi? AJ. Mm. Tamina. I don't wow. think Tamina or Naomi ever won the Divas title. They didn't. I'm going to go. Actually, I don't think Tamina's won any of them. So I'm, I'm going to go, go Natalia. I'm going Natalia. Yeah, I think it was Natalia. It was actually AJ Lee. Yeah! Correct. She (laughs) tapped out Natalia with the Black Widow to win the championship. She was actually the champion going into the match. So Vicky Guerrero had set it up where it was basically uh, AJ Lee basically against everyone, I guess, in a sense. But she ended up tapping out Natalia. Apparently, I need to just listen to the people in the chat. (laughs) They're they're very smart. It's normal. There you go. Cheaters. I'm on private oh, chat. I need to go to the chat. There we go. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Who, thought he oh. was talking to somebody for a second. <laughs> Paige won the night after, right? Yeah. Was I that the night so. of Paige's debut? T- Paige's debut? Yes, because she did. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes, at Res- era WrestleMania, Lord. And she um, broke her neck. Andrew Herm is coming with, coming with some grammar on us. Right? <laughs> 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 Eddie, is that you? No. Next question. She said no. <laughs> Who is not a member of the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2014? Oh. Is Lita, Razor Ramon, Lita, Lita. Lita. Jake, or Jake Bruno Snake. San Martino? Razor and Lita. Jake was the same night. Was it? Because Razor got cut short because okay, Jake then so Bruno, long. Lita. I'm going Lita. I'm going Lita. I think that yeah, was the Lita, year they introduced Lita came the Bruno statue. You all need to follow Timmy. It is Bruno San Martino. He is not a member of the class of 2014. We don't talk yeah, about you, Bruno. You give him all the easy ones. <laughs> Lita went in in 2014. Yep. She I sure didn't. Did. I wouldn't guess that either. Ah. Huh? Next question. 
Who won the battle roll match for the Andre the Giant Memorial Trophy? Was it Mark Cesaro? Henry, Cesaro. Cesaro, Sheamus, or the Big Show? Cesaro. Cesaro. I don't think I, I don't think it was in New Orleans that Cesaro won though. For Shizzle. I'm gonna say Big Show. Anybody That's else guess? Oh, we Big talking show. about that? I just thought this was the first one. I don't know. I'm going with Cesaro. I'm I'm upset Yoshitatsu, not a choice. <laughs> Hmm. I didn't know how to spell it. Uh, <laughs> Cesaro. It was actually Cesaro. Uh, you know what he my favorite part of that question was? What? Amy says, who won the battle roll? <laughs> <laughs> you can put it on the boat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. <clears throat> That's a clip. I'm going to mark it. Prior to <laughs> WrestleMania 30, what was the last WrestleMania to have an appearance by the Ultimate Warrior? 12. 12. 12, 12 it is. Yeah. Which, which uh, we're getting ready to watch, which we'll live watch this week we will, on the Pilter Free Podcast. <laughs> we will be watching that tomorrow right here. What a great tie in. It is 12. He 12 wrestled. Is. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Yeah, and buried his sorry ass right now. Wrestling, <laughs> wrestled him is a very kind term. <laughs> he dropped him and then jumped yeah, on well, his Well, who's back. laughing now? That's well, well not the Warriors Ultimate Warrior. Dead. He's dead. Not the warrior. <laughs> very dead. Well, I'm gonna question. tell you what. Oh, the Ultimate Warrior. When you think about it, he he went over Triple H, but he instilled dextrosity into him. Yep. <laughs> that led him to become one of the most powerful men in the wrestling business today. Is that how we're doing this now? <laughs> That's what Dextrucity did for him. Of course, according to this wrestling community that I follow on Facebook, at Facebook, but um, Vince McMahon poisoned the warrior. Did you not hear this? Mm. <laughs> Vince McMahon Putin No, but you that. know what I did hear? <laughs> that, they, that, that, that they told Hulk Hogan to stay away from him. And they think that Hulk Hogan going up and talking to him anyway stressed him out and caused his heart attack. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's better. How is that a better story? It's a better story. <laughs> I was like... Warrior had a heart attack because he was intimidated by Hulk Hogan in his 60s. <laughs> he thought he was going to get body slammed. Get, Hogan's get the finally a the baby. Drop. Place in story. That reconciliation was ca caused him stress. <laughs> it was the thermos. Oh, I think we found the real reason. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. What was the shortest match on the Ooh. WrestleMania card? Was it the Shield versus Kane and the New Age Outlaws? Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker? Well, wasn't that one. Bad News Barrett versus Big E? I don't even remember Or the one. Vicky Guerrero invitational match for the WWE Divas Championship. Bad News uh, Barrett versus B. Yeah, it's got to be. That's what I don't I'm even going, remember yeah, that happening. <laughs> I, so everyone little... picked that. So I'm going to be the one outlier uh -huh. and pick The Shield versus Kane and the New Age Outlaws. It was The Shield versus Kane Woo! and the New Age Outlaws. Oh, oh we ass, didn't know? Baby. That match was two minutes and 56 seconds. Because I also don't remember that one happening either. <laughs> Dang, the entrances lasted longer than the match. I actually, Roman, that was a little Roman bit. Roman Reigns like, doesn't get paid by the hour. That's right. <laughs> that was Swerve because Baz News, Barrett, and Big E was actually on Extreme Rules. It was not on WrestleMania. So that was an ex that was a little bit of a Swerve. Well, then it like, didn't was, occur. So it was zero seconds. That was so a we were right. Question. That was. Well, we don't keep we don't keep points over here, but I'm still giving it to TJ. Alan Fay has a fair right criticism. One. C or A. I picked A and now the answer is C. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> Good job. We love you. We love By you. the way, we pick C. Also fun, yeah. Amy That's and fun. Allison. Every, everyone's a winner here. on the midway. Exactly. Everyone got that one right. Let's just let's call it. This last question is a fill in the blank. Uh, <laughs> the three ladies that surrounded Triple H during his interest later became future WWE Women's Champions. Charlotte, Charlotte Sasha, 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 Becky. And Becky was the third one, yeah. And Becky yeah. Lynch. It is not Becky. No, it's Charlotte, uh, Sasha. Sasha. 
Charlotte and um, Bailey. It is Charlotte and Sasha. It wasn't Bailey. It was. Um... It's not Bailey, and it's not Becky. Hmm. Alexa. It is Alexa. Alexa Bliss. It was Alexa Bliss. Where did she so, go? She had a baby. Pregnant, you dumbass. Oh, I don't pay. It's hard to wrestle when yeah. you're pregnant. Unless you really you're Justin. shouldn't. You really shouldn't uh, wrestle. That. Did you guys, do you not remember the Marlena angle from like 2001? She wasn't yeah. pregnant. Or the Lita angle with. Well, Kane she was in storyline, Timmy. Well, May Young uh, wrestled pregnant. Or May Young and, and with gave birth to a hand. There's been a lot of pregnant ladies in WWE. These are all valid. Very I wonder true. why. Very true. Very true. Because they're getting dicked down by the wrestlers. Their names. And, their names either start with an N, a D, or an A. Yeah. Uh, mm. Ooh. Or May Young. Or no DNA, pal. Yeah. <laughs> and that is your trivia. Thank you. Ta-da. You boys are a bad influence on me. Yep. We we tend to have that effect on We them. also proved we were a bad influence on Amy the other night. <laughs> By the way, thanks for lending her to us. No problem. It was a great che- show. I checks in the it. mail, buddy. <laughs> well, I was in well, I was in the Deutschland. You were yeah. not. You were actually in the Indiana. No, I was home actually <laughs> when that show happened. I was already home. So I actually trust. I was like, "So, do you guys just like want me to do it now?" No, I've been home for no. so <laughs> Definitely did not. <laughs> good times. If, good times. Hey, and if y'all enjoyed the trivia part of the show, we're going to have some of this silly nonsense available coming up next month. Are we supposed on the to talk about this yet? Or yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, we yeah we We've broke. Kind of been teasing. We broke the news. Ram, on, Ram me, stands for down. wrestling and more. Wrestling and more. Yeah, cause, well, we also discussed that. Why it wasn't Wham and it was Ram. <laughs> That's your fault. Yeah, Ram. We said, we Hashtag were wondering Ram, uh, why why Pondwater Dave doesn't like the W in wrestling. He just it's R-A-S-S-L-R-A-M. drop it. R-A-S-S-L-R-A-M. That's wrestling. Well, then his and name was, should be Pond Ratter Dave. <laughs> Pond Ratter Dave. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> or it'd just be Pond Otter Dave. <laughs> the W is silent. No. Hey guys, Uh-oh, we got a commercial. We're going to talk oh. about big time belts real quick. I'm in. Big time belts, Facebook.com. Uh, high quality, low prices, making your championship dreams come true. Look at this Las Vegas championship belt this guy had made. My favorite is the, the duck on the side plates where it says ducats. He went to big time belts. Uh, our good friend in the chat, um, and he's rolling with us in the chat, Tim Robinson, former promoter of AMW, finally finally got his belts. Uh, you know, uh, he had a dream that he'd always wanted a belt like this for his wrestling promotion, and now he owns one. The second one's almost ready, and the third one is in, being drawn up. I mean, he got the belt bug. He got the belt bud bad, and big time belts can scratch that itch for you. Um, I'm seeing big time belts, but they're from uh, Salcott, Pakistan. Yes. Not... Yes. Oh, that's yes. Muhammad. That's them. Yep. All right. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Muhammad Zubair. Uh, Muhammad Zubair. The Manchester Player of the Week. When he, when, whenever he gets this belt, he's strutting at, or, or she, they're strutting ass around campus. With this masterpiece from Big Time Belts, the Mississippi right, well, Sea Wolves gonna minor get a league Florida hockey team belt, has man. a belt. I had the privilege of holding this belt. Oh, and it is a badass belt. It's different. The quality is excellent. The leather. It's. It, I mean, Muhammad does such a good job on these belts. He can take. You know, you just give him a loose idea of what you want, and he'll make the art for you, and it will be, it will be something you can be proud of. Um, OCW Southern Heritage Wrestling Champion went to big time belts. I like belts. that one too. That's and this one. belt right here, until the AWA gets a new belt, because they assure me that it's going to be better. Hmm. This is a masterpiece that was created for PCW heavyweight. Uh, for PCW Palmetto Championship Rest Palmetto Championship Wrestling, words are hard. Uh, mm. This belt is heavy, multi-layered, 
bold colors, excellent craftsmanship. Um, I mean, look at that. If you're watching on video, that's hot. You can see that center medallion. I love that. I mean, he is really killing it over at Big Time Belts. Facebook.com. Join the group. Let's make your belt dreams come true. Um, I told Tim that he was worried about getting the belt bug and getting a bunch of them. I told him I got 76 of them. Trust me, your <laughs> wife will get over it. Mm. Big time belts. Thank you for sponsoring our pod. All, All right. right. Another belt idea. Pimento championship wrestling. The pin, wow. That would be good. That would hit. <laughs> that would hit. I'm thinking a big green olive. Okay. <laughs> Maybe in a martini. Man, we, we learned a lot on today's show. We've learned that corn is over in Brazil. Not, yes. not the food, the band. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Yeah. And also Nick Harrison is over big in Brazil. Nick Harrison is over big everywhere. Yes. Right. So As would you say Brazil be. is a bunch of uh, freaks on a leash? I mm -hmm. think that, yes. <laughs> I I think kind of Corn does a pretty good version of Word Up, too. Oh, the reason why we very had... good. I love their edition of Word Up. I do, too. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of, of Cameo's version of Word Up. Uh-huh. But Corn but corn kills it, man. So when, I, when, that song hadn't... first, when that song first came out, I used to walk around my house going room from room, room to room. And I would when I would see someone, I go, so tell me what's the word up word up. <laughs> I just do that all the time. <laughs> uh, Did you wear the cod piece? No, I don't have one. Breakfast club. Breakfast club. I, I think so, that's what it said. <laughs> word, word up came on in the car the other day, and my grandkids had to listen to me butcher it up. Which one? And you didn't Cameo. record it? We need content day. That's what we do. We record no, when we start my, singing. My wife is really quick to record me making a fool out of myself. So y'all may get a lot of behind the scenes. I'm going to tell, tell your audience right now, if you haven't, go listen to our podcast this week. My trivioki section, we do pants on the ground. No, you, 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 Let's you, pretend you like everybody doesn't know what your podcast is. Tell us, tell us what your podcast is. Let's pretend like everybody doesn't know what it is. Well, let's see. Well, this week it's Amy and Dave and me. Normally it's TJ, Dave and me, and we uh, What's cover the, name of the podcast. Uh, do we... Stupid. TJ, Filter Dave free. And me. Filter free podcast. Thank you. I didn't know if I went and put my podcast into the search bar. If, it, if you up. put your podcast in, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> but we basically take a wrestling event and make fun of it. That's even if it's good, it's, even if it's good, cast. <laughs> Who did that? I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie's in the my producer. The producer, oh, hold on. The producer of this show, yeah. the chicken charge, my beautiful wife Stephanie, who we affectionately refer to as Teppy. Yes. The filter there. free podcast is a really fun listen because that's what i do in the car because not only do you talk about a wrestling event and a time period but then you talk about events that were going on during the time we talked about on the show 2010 march 26 2010 which so, is really recent for us yes like, yes pretty recent for you all but we talked about top stories and movies and um songs that were out and so you're kind of taken back to that time period when you are talking about the wrestling that was going on at the same time it's a really a good it's a lot of good time did you wear your buckle jeans for this episode amy <laughs> yeah i did <laughs> she, she wore them on the ground after uh, that. yeah yeah the song the song we played the song that's awesome <laughs> Well, yeah, I called it dance on the floor, so I didn't get the points. We got we, <laughs> we got a huge show coming up for y'all next week. Next week, we're going to have the former NWA light heavyweight champion. What? The last one before the title was retired and before it was later brought back by Billy Corgan. 50 caliber Barrett Brown's going to join us next week. Phenomenal um, name. 
Yeah. He's 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 wrestled in WWE. He's in the been with the NWA, the Ring of Honor, New Japan, the British Empire Wrestling, New Japan America. Uh, I mean, and there, we'll have some fun stories of times that you've seen him on your television that you didn't realize it was him. Did you just say the Ring of Honor? I th- I think I put the in front of a lot of stuff on that. <laughs> He also just didn't he just wrestle uh, Bam Bam Malone, who was on our show last week. Yes, sir. I'm going to watch that. Um, Lance Lance Peterson's in the chat. Lance Peterson with the uh, world class podcast, world class, the world class cast. Uh, Terry Gordy's Dark Side of the Ring is on as we as we speak. It's already aired tonight, and I will watch it. And share our thoughts on it next week for sure. And I can't wait our to good hear friend, what yours our are. Good Lance. friend Miranda on there. Miranda Gordy, yeah. sweetheart. We we had her in the sweet life. Actually, was our second one in St. Louis for the Royal Rumble a few years ago, and she is awesome. Well, we're in for a treat next week with with Barrett Brown. He's a he's quality human being as well, and a hell of a wrestler. He looks familiar. He does. You've seen him before. You've seen him recently on AEW against Wardlow. Mm. Did he win? No, I don't. I don't know if that would be. Did he bleed? Would... <laughs> not yeah, because ironically, when you have a knee injury, you use that knee with a brace on it as a weapon. Mm. You know, normally it's just power bomb city for everybody, but let me write that down. But <laughs> apparently, the cy- I mean, well when you have a knee brace, you take advantage of it. You cut a man's head open. But Quilts I digress. Wearing oh. knee brace. <laughs> All right, Dave, take us home. All right, we're going to take us out of here for the guys over at the Filter Free Podcast, Mr. Dave, DJ, and some other guy, Timmy C. Popcast. Popcast. Podcast. Popcast. Thank you guys Hang for on. joining Let's us. Look. Time uh, out. Time out. Tim, we were like 20 episodes in before we even got the name of this show right. Yeah, really. <laughs> in, in fact, if, if, you listen, if you listen to our show, I didn't get the name of your show right. I wanted to call it the first name you had. Oh, the Pond yeah. Water Dave show. It got it got to be a running joke that we just couldn't wait to do the. We couldn't wait to hear the intro to see if Justin was going to even get close. <laughs> we have we have this just seen similar... the night conrad con- came on he vapor locked and conrad took uh, over. Yeah. i'm conrad to thompson the, <laughs> we had to we had to change the name so i could actually get it right at the beginning well, uh, it's okay it runs in the family <laughs> all right go ahead i won't interrupt this time all right well all right. we want to thank nick harrison for being here with us we want to thank everyone in the chat for being here with us we will see you next week for Pond Water Dave, for those other guys I just said, and for Miss Amy and for myself. Please take care of yourself and each other. So long, everyone. Bye. What a f-